Okay, so here you can see the battery monitor currently working, drawing about three and a half to four amps. Don't have a whole lot on in the trailer, except for some LED lights, as you can see there. And a couple more up there, along with the stereo that's on standby, and the carbon monoxide detector. Those things are just on standby drawing power. So you can see right there, we're at about 12.7 volts and using almost four amps power. So let's go ahead and turn everything off. That way we can get as much load off of this thing as possible. And what we're gonna do is open this panel door here real quick. And we'll pop this guy off. There we go. So now what we need to do, so we need to start turning off all these breakers, get all the power off of here. And that way there's nothing um, that can give you a little buzz or a shock, even though you'll still have power at this other side uh, when you pull out these fuses and such. So right now, this is going to basically turn off the stereo, fire detector, um, your carbon monoxide detector. Um, that way those things are not sitting there at idle on standby, um, along with maybe any other systems that might just be sitting there waiting to be turned on. Let me grab that little guy right there. Rah. And now you can see that I have these four little LED lights on, and those guys are probably drawing, I'd say, half an amp, um, like 0 0.05. Um, those little guys don't really have any draw at all. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reset my battery monitor right there. You see that? Boom, zero. And I'm still running about 13 volts. Those little LEDs, like I said, probably not drawing enough. Okay, so what we got to do now is, uh, so just to show you right there that those guys are completely off, no longer drawing power. And what we'll do now is we'll go outside, we'll flip the main battery switch off. And then that's going to kind of reset the monitor as well, and all the systems in the trailer. And then we'll shove that guy and turn him back on. And then you'll see here in a second, the battery monitor is now going to be just sitting there at zero. So that's basically no load. Except for the little four LED lights. Everything else is dead off. So now we'll start plugging in these uh, fuses again real quick. That little spark there, that was for the inverter. I forget what this one went to, but kind of doesn't matter. Anyway, you're seeing it's still drawing zero amps right now. We're sitting there probably at 0 0.05 with those little LED lights. But as we plug in a couple more of these, you'll see that little thing change right there to 0 0.2 amps. So more than likely, that's the stereo and the carbon monoxide detector that's probably on along with the fire alarm. Plug in these other fuses here. Those little LED lights will go off. And as you can see, my amps will go up just a little bit. But some of those systems, when they power up, they'll actually use a little bit more power for probably the first 30 seconds while they kind of do their little power up. And then they'll go back to a full standby mode. And then it, it'll actually drop it to where my current when it's resting is like 0.2 amps. That's what my trailer seems to sit at while nothing's on. Just this carbon monoxide detector, that guy right there, which is my stereo. And then you'll see my battery monitor says 0.4 at the moment. And that's kind of where it lives, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Um, even with all, with all the breakers on, it doesn't change anything at this point. So... Um, and then what we'll do is we'll also do a little test in a second. We'll turn on some other uh, sorts of power, turn the lights on. we will turn on my hood fan. That way you can see the load. Uh, so you can see right there I'm right about 0 0.2 amps. And that's, again, going to be the stereo. Uh, fridge is currently off. It's just I closed it, and normally it's open so it can breathe. Let's see here. All right, so what we'll do now is we'll uh, we'll turn on a light up here. This light here is actually a non-LED light. The only non-LED light that I have in the trailer, which I need to swap that out. You can see now I'm at 1.7 amps. Let's turn on that hood fan right there, and I can see that guy's drawing ooh, another couple amps itself. And we'll go over here and turn on some of the cabin lights. And we get a little bit more draw. Yeah, let's see what we're using now. A good solid 5 amps just running that stuff. Hey everyone, well, hope you liked the video. Uh, yeah, that's just a quick way of kind of doing a zero load calibration on these little monitors. There's not a lot else you can do on them.
but that's just kind of a quick way to have the least amount of power that is inside your RV because obviously when this thing is sitting here just with the battery switch on you still have stuff that's kind of doing that ghost power it's just kind of drawing it secretly and you don't even know it um, so anyway that way you can totally find out what's running in your RV while it's just sitting here if you're gone um, out exploring and stuff and, and you have everything off you're still gonna have a, you know just a half an amp possibly running um, that's gonna be drawing a little bit of power so anyway if you like the video, please like and subscribe, and I'll bring you some more simple tips and tricks. And uh, pretty soon I'm going to be doing my uh, solar install real quick, which is just going to be a briefcase solar system. Don't need much for this. It's just for those. Uh, I'm not much of a uh, boondocker or dry camper. Sorry, got something in my eye there. But um, I do like to do just a couple of nights, you know, dry camping. And, uh, you know, having a little bit of solar is always easy and a good idea. Um, it just makes it easy to, you know, charge up a... Uh, 12 volt deep cycle battery real quick just to keep your batteries topped off so i'll end up showing you just a quick video of that pretty soon so like subscribe and see you soon